and welcome to episode 154 of the Craft House Magic Podcast. My name's Ellie and I'm coming to you from Norwich in Norfolk in the UK and today is the 25th of February. So welcome everybody. I hope you all had a lovely crafty week since the last time I've spoken to you and I'm here to share all the things that I've been making in the last seven days. So today I have some knitting, some cross stitch, a gadget, some confession. <laughs> because I went on a knitting retreat online and I had to be supportive and buy things didn't I that's my excuse <laughs> so I have some confessions I also have a few questions from the ask me anything thread in the Ravelry group and some information on my shop update at the end of the podcast so if you want to switch to any of those sections if you go to the description bar there's a little time stamp for each of the sections if you want to skip along to any uh, that you're particularly interested in so you can find me on Instagram, Ravelry and Facebook as Craft Ice Magic and I have my own website craftisemagic.co.uk where you can find my hand dyed yarns, handmade project bags, stitch markers, higher higher knitting needles, clover crochet hooks and bag making supplies. So we have the Craft 20 a Day Make Along, me any craft where you're doing a few minutes every day so that you can chip away at those bigger projects. You can do the hashtag Craft 20 a Day on Instagram or come along to the Ravelry group and chat away there. So let's get on with the good stuff shall we? So I've got a couple of projects that Adam's mum's knitted for me. Um, so I'll show you those first and then I'll show you how I've been getting on with my large projects. So first of all, Liz has knitted another one of these lovely hats. So Liz knitted one of these for herself in my Always colourway, in my Merino DK base, um, a few weeks ago. And I added a pom-pom on it as well for her. And I, I seamed it up because it is knitted flat. So she'd knitted the piece and then I seamed it up at the sides and added a pom-pom and then my mum said well I want one of those as well because she's a copycat <laughs> so I, I dyed some yarn especially for mum because she wanted this sort of beige colour and this actually is a colourway that I have a Love Changes Everything mini set it's the beige from that um, I haven't got it listed as a separate colourway yet because I haven't sorted out some names for those but I may do a few of those colourways as full skeins in the future but that's like a lovely sandy beige colour and I basically used just over 100 grams of yarn with a pom-pom as well. If I hadn't done the pom-pom it would have been within 100 grams of the DK Merino but I dyed up an extra 20 gram mini so that I'd have plenty for the hat as well but I still had about 10 grams left. So with the pom-pom I basically made the pom-pom up and then I had two threads on the end of the pom-pom and I threaded those with a darning needle through the top of the hat and then I threaded those through a button on the inside and then I've just tied a bow there so that you can undo that pom-pom really easily and then take it off to give it a wash and also the button I think helps the pom-pom stand up straight which I think is good so I'll try it on to show you Mum is absolutely delighted with this hat. She can't wait till I send it to her. <laughs> you can see there how the pom-pom stands up quite straight with the with the button on the top, which I think is lovely. I'll give you a bit of a twirl. <laughs> oh, I think that's a lovely pattern. So thank you to Liz for knitting my mum a hat. <laughs> so that one is going to be posted off tomorrow probably, or this afternoon. But I also wanted to make Dad's a hat and I bought some yarn from the Edinburgh Yarn Festival last year and it was from the Hawkshaw Sheep Farm and it, this is 100% British wool and it's created from a Shetland fleece and it's an iron weight yarn, 147 metres per 100 grams and I had this in mind to knit Dad a hat with but Liz was wanting some projects to do so I passed them on to her to knit and she made a beautiful job of knitting this gorgeous cable hat. Liz's speciality is cables so I wanted to pick some cables for her to do. So this pattern is called the October Hat by Sloan Rosenthal. I will leave the links to the patterns and the yarns in the description bar down below if you want to find those but isn't that beautiful? And I just think that this hat is absolutely gorgeous um, for males and females. It's a little bit big on me, but Dad's head's bigger than mine, so that's good. <laughs> 
but I really love the way those cables have turned out. So with this hat actually, the pattern said to do, I think twice as much ribbing to have it folded over, but I was a little bit worried about not having enough yarn left. So I just said to Liz, do just a couple of inches of the ribbon at the bottom so it's not actually folded over at all. But there was a little bit of yarn left, so potentially there was probably enough yarn to do that double brim. But I do think actually sometimes, because it's quite a thick iron anyway, it might be thick enough to be just sort of single thickness down there at the bottom rather than being folded over as well. So I'm glad that I've just left it at the two inches. And there we go. Really pleased with those. So thank you Liz for knitting those and I've sewn the ends in. I didn't actually block these because I think that with a hat they'll stretch nicely over the head anyway and they don't really need blocking. So I've got two lovely hats to send to my mum and dad. I have been doing quite a lot of work on two of my works in progress. Now I did say last week that I wasn't going to show you my cosy memories blanket until I'd done a full row and that that was going to be next week. But as I have actually completed an entire row <laughs> I thought I'd better show it you before I carry on to the next one. So, since the last podcast, I have done two, four, six, eight squares. Um, so I've got this one. So I've some of these, I don't know what they are, but there are some interspersed that I do. So that was one that was just balled up, ready to knit, and I don't know what it is. Um, but this one is a Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit's Yarns, and that's out of the gorgeous little mini set that I purchased last week. Again, that's another one I don't know what it is. I just reached into my little basket of goodies and just picked it out. This one is another Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit's Yarns. Another mystery one. Oh, this one is a Snuggly Stars yarn that I knitted a shawl out of a little while ago. I can't remember what the name of the yarn was though, but absolutely beautiful deeper tones there. And these two are also Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit yarns. So I've made most of this row basically Mr. and Mrs. Rabbit's yarns really. So we got a whole row finished and it's getting bigger and bigger. I think, I don't know, I may have decided not to do it quite as big as I had initially decided. So you can see there that we've got a sort of chevron lines going on with the centre of the squares. And each of those sections is about seven squares wide where they're going in one direction and then I've switched directions. And I've done three rows of ones going in this direction. I might do just another four rows of squares and then put some I called bind off around the edge. I don't know. We shall see. We shall see when I get there. Because <laughs> it is quite big already. And I think I would like to do a sort of different design blanket where there's not quite so many colours um, and have it as a separate blanket. Because I think sometimes if it, they get too big and too heavy, then I won't use it as much. So I shall see. But that's how it looks at the moment. And you can see that I've been trying to alternate dark and light yarns to spread out the yarn colours a little bit. Even though they're sort of random, there are all sorts of colours in there. So there we go, I'm addicted to that. But it's partially because I was doing the online knitting retreat and there was lots of Zoom meetings and watching people do talks. So I was picking up this and knitting on it because it was easy to do and I didn't have to think too much. So that's my excuse for not being able to put it down. <laughs> So that's my Cozy Memories blanket, but I have put quite a lot of work on my t-shirt that I started to knit. So this is the V Back Tee and it's by Jamie Hoffman. Now I say the V Back Tee, that is the name of the pattern, but you can potentially wear it the other way round, wear the V-necks at the front and that is what I'm intending to do. I want to have the V-neck at the front because I think that will be a bit more flattering on me. And this is how I've got on. So it doesn't look that much. <laughs> but I feel like it's taken me quite a long time to knit this. It, this bit of ribbing here is one by one twisted rib. It isn't specified in the pattern. But I just thought I love the look of one by one twisted rib. And I'm not keen on just normal um, one by one rib without it being twisted. So I just thought 
I'll do twisted rib and it might make the neckline slightly higher than it would have been in the pattern and that came out quite low I think so but I think it'll be all right I have tried it on around my neck just to sort of check where I think it'll lay but with the weight of tea I think that'll bring it down even more so this yarn is a stranded dye works yarn so this is the yarn label from stranded and then the colorway is equinox and it's on a bfl base so that's what i've started off with so far so i've picked out three different yarns out of my stash that were all sort of single skeins to put together to make this v-back tea and i'm going to be blending in this color next which is a Hue Loco yarn and this is actually on a glitz sock base so this has got a bit of Stellina on and it's a merino yarn um, this is called Robin's Egg colourway so that's the second one I'm going to blend in so it's going to blend in like this going slightly darker and then the third one I'm going to use is this one now this one is a Hedgerow yarns and this is a gorgeous sort of teal grey turquoise mix and this is a a merino high twist yarn so it's got the same sort of ply to it but it's it is merino rather than bfl like the first one is and it's called zen garden but i thought that those three went together quite nicely i'm excited to sort of get to the blending colors bit so i i don't know how far away i am from getting to the stage where i'm splitting for the sleeves but i think i've got quite a bit to go but I thought that that colour would look quite nice next to my face because I think my hair goes quite nicely with the turquoisey greeny blue colour. Next I have my cross stitch to show you. So I've done quite a bit since last week. I have got the welcome finished at the bottom and then I've started doing these little bits of green. They're by no means finished because there's a lot of bits of leafy bits around the edge that I need to finish I have started this dark green bit here there's another dark green bit there and there's lots of leafy bits all the way around the edge lots of snowflakes that I need to fill in and also there's some sparkly bits as well to add so I've still got quite a bit to go but I'm hoping in the next week or two I could maybe finish it <laughs> so this is a pattern that's by Country Cottage Needleworks and it's called the Winter Welcome quite a few people recently have been asking me what the magnifiers that I use for um, working on my cross stitch are I will put a link in the description bar down below to the magnifiers that I use I picked them up from Amazon they're just sort of white framed glasses and I find them really useful they have got sort of arms on that you can wear as just a normal pair of glasses and you can wear those sort of on top of your glasses as well so you can wear your glasses underneath and I I find that um, quite useful to be able to just pop them on and off but they have got an elastic elasticated um, thing to go around the back of your head if you don't find those comfortable there are other versions of the magnifiers I have had a Rolson version as well um, which is equally as good but sometimes I felt because I had the it was like a plastic strap around the back of my head that it gave me a little bit of a headache if I wore it for too long um, but the one that's in the description bar I definitely recommend one thing I would say about the magnifiers is that if you put batteries in the front so that there is a light as well I do find it a little bit heavy on my nose but without those batteries I find it perfect I like to work in daylight anyway so anyway I've waffled on about the magnifiers long enough I will also leave a link to a frame that's similar to this one it this isn't actually a q-snap frame but it is similar to that it's a plastic frame that is actually called it just says super frame on this but I actually picked this particular one up from a charity shop so I'm not quite sure where you'd get these exact ones from and I use a Lowry floor stand so I will list in the description box all the things that I use for my cross stitch setup in the description box of every video where I show my cross stitch so that you can easily find it so there we go I've got to that stage you can see that I've got um, little bits of wadding stuck in the frame here and I've also sewn on little bits of other fabric around the edge of the linen that I was using just to make it a little bit bigger so that I could put it in this larger frame so I didn't have to move it too much so this wadding I found that if I pop the wadding in the sides it would hold it nice and tight and have more grip on the fabric rather than leaving it without and I th also think it protects the fabric a little bit as well so there we go that's my cross stitch 
So I have my gadget to show you for this week. Now I've been using this quite a lot recently so I thought I must show it on the podcast as a little gadget. So this is a scissor sharpener and it's by Fiskars and I picked this up because I do have a larger scissor sharpener but I found that putting smaller scissors in the larger scissor sharpener was sort of harder to get the scissors really nice and sharp so I tend to use these Fiskars small scissors for cutting out applique and all sorts of things like that and because I'm cutting out applique with heat and bond on there's paper on the back of the heat and bond and I do think that that blunts the scissors a little bit more frequently than if I was using it for other means so I tend to use the Fiskars scissor sharpeners um, and these have been working really nicely when I've used the scissors for a couple of days I then sharpen them with this scissor sharpener which is really handy to pop in any sort of notions pouch or anything just to keep them nice and sharp so that you can actually get a nice clean cut on fabrics I wouldn't necessarily use these on other types of scissors I'm not quite sure if you'd get away with so I sell these higher higher scissors in the shop that I use for cutting embroidery threads and yarns and things you could probably sharpen them on here but I think that it would take away some of the beautiful um, colour effects on the outside of the scissors so I probably wouldn't use them on those plus I would only use these for cutting threads and yarns anyway and you very rarely need to sharpen scissors then but for something like this where I'm cutting out applique all the time very very handy thing to have so I'll leave a link to that in the description bar and I think I actually got this for Christmas off Adam um, I had it on my Amazon wish list, but I'm so pleased that he did get it for me. It's been very useful to be able to really get in close um, into these small scissors rather than using my larger one. So now I have some confessions. I've got a big excuse for the reason why I have quite a few things that I've purchased. <laughs> I had a lovely time at the Nordic Knitting Retreat that was one of the Knitty Retreats organised by Zoe from Pins and Needles and Jenny from the Owl About Yarn podcast and shop. They are the loveliest ladies and they made such a good job of organising everything. Uh, just absolutely brilliant. So there was a few lovely talks and I learnt loads from those and I've got lovely ideas of things that I want to cast on now which is good and also what I thought was really good was the zoom meetings those knit and natter zoom meetings you've logged on and to start with there was quite a lot of people in the room because obviously that's everybody in the retreat but then Jenny split us off into separate little rooms and each time you got split off randomly into a group so that means you got put into a room with perhaps somebody you wouldn't have talked to properly at a retreat before so it was really nice to be able to get to know new people and just have a chat about all the yarny goodness really <laughs> and I can't recommend it more for the organization of Jenny and Zoe they did a brilliant job and they had some wonderful people in the marketplace so the marketplace was basically on Instagram live videos and then you'd had a list of all the ones that were going to happen so you'd pop over to each of their Instagram pages and watch what they got to show us and I was tempted quite a few times so first of all I did buy a goodie bag for the weekend and it included some beautiful Cartref yarn. So Cartref yarn is some beautiful yarn that is actually produced and spun in Wales and it's a mixture of Welsh mule and blue faced Leicester yarns and they do the dyeing as well and I've got to make a big apology I said it was Jenny that does the dyeing but Zoe does some as well <laughs> they both do a lovely job at dyeing this gorgeous yarn so this is quite a toothy not su non superwash yarn so it's ideal for color work and things but aren't those beautiful colors so this is the natural color that comes in which I just love those natural tones and then there's a red and a navy as well so that's natural drag and sapphire um, and that's a beautiful combination and it also came with this gorgeous tea cozy pattern that's designed by Zoe and I do believe that she may be doing a hat version of this later on but it was all in the little kit and then it also came with this gorgeous knitty retreat pin which I absolutely love I do love pins 
and rather a lot of sweeties. <laughs> but they may have already been consumed. Adam did help me as well. So that was what was in the goodie bag, but I also purchased some things too. So I'm going to go in the order that things arrived. I got these gorgeous snips from Coco Knits that were from Michelle from the loveliest yarn company. And I just thought these were lovely. Um, Michelle sells lots of lovely different yarns, but also she stocks all the Coco Knits stuff. And I thought I just need to try some of these. Because they're really cute. They're little snips and they come with a little cover as well, which I think is rather lovely. So I had to pick some of those up and they feel really nice quality too. And Michelle is the loveliest lady as well. So I did actually, I nearly bought some of her beautiful yarns. She's got Banshee yarns where she does her own hand dyeing. But I thought I'm going to hold off for a bit because I've still got quite a lot of yarn in my stash. But I had to have these. And then on the Instagram live videos, Emily, it's Emily Folds showed these. <laughs> they are ethically sourced alpaca pom-poms, which are gorgeous. Look at those colours. <laughs> they are toft pom-poms. And what's interesting is there's like a little press stud on the back. So you have this press stud that goes into there. But you can then sew this onto a bobble hat or wherever you want to put it and then you can take the pom-pom off to wash it which i think is brilliant absolutely brilliant so these actually came in a large letter and they fluffed all back up again which i think is brilliant <laughs> but these colors absolutely love them i've got to take them off the cards so that i can play around with them a little bit look at those absolutely gorgeous they did a range of other lovely colors as well but i just had to have these these are pretty much my favorite colors <laughs> there we go so they were from emily folds and i'll leave links to all the shops in the description bar down below next To start with, let me explain why I've bought more fibre. I've been watching Becky from the Back to Blighty podcast and she's been doing lots of spinning and I've been thinking, oh, I really need to get my spinning wheel out again. I haven't spun for something like a year. And then Becky has got it back in my mind. Not that I've had a chance to do much spinning this week, but I need to get my spinning wheel out. And then I was looking at these shops and Cat and Sparrow had this. <laughs> I could not resist. I have got another one of the Cat and Sparrow um, fleeces, which is also absolutely gorgeous, which I haven't touched yet, partly because I think it's too gorgeous to touch. <laughs> but I am going to get it out and enjoy spinning every little bit. And this is a mixture of 75% Polworth and 25% Mulberry Silk, this one. And this is the Magnolia colourway. But just such a delicate mixture of colours. I just had to have it. Lovely. I have to get my little stash of other fibres that I've got and show you all the lovely fleeces that I haven't spun yet. <laughs> but that was coming from Cat and Sparrow and she also did some beautiful yarn as well. I had to have this because it is a self-striping yarn. So this is a cake from Dragon Hill Studio. And as you can see, it is self-striping. So we have, I'll take this lovely ribbon off now actually because I just wanted to show you how lovely it was packaged. But that is how it's going to look. So we've got a grey stripe, some multicoloured speckled stripe and then a darker grey stripe. And I thought that, that would make the most gorgeous pair of socks. And then I saw that she'd got the contrasting mini to go with it. So I thought that that would be really nice for heels and toes. So that is going to go together really nicely. I'd actually popped in my basket this colourway, but on a different base. And there was wonderful customer service. And she'd switched it out for me so that it was on the same BFL base, which is lovely. So excellent customer service from Dragon Hill Studio. And I'm very excited to cast it on. 
So I have a few questions from the Ask Me Anything thread now. So Patty asked, do you need a serger or overlocker for sewing jersey? So I have an overlocker, which is also known as a serger in the US, but I also have a cover stitch machine. Now you don't actually need any of these machines to, in order to be able to sew jersey. You can do it on a standard sewing machine. So I would recommend either using a relatively narrow zigzag i think like a two or three millimeter wide zigzag stitch on your sewing machine for sewing seams or you can do a lightning stitch which basically stitches sort of backwards and forwards like this just to make the seam a little bit stretchier i think it is easier to sew some slippy viscose jerseys on an overlocker but for cotton jerseys and things the normal sewing machine is absolutely fine and to be honest if you've got a little bit of experience with sewing cotton jerseys then the viscose jersey are okay to stitch you just have to be a little bit careful for when you're starting off um, at the edge of a fabric you need to just start a little bit away from the edge because it's quite slippy and it can get tucked into the stitch plate so you can absolutely do it on a standard sewing machine all sewing machines tend to do like a zigzag stitch so even if you haven't got this lightning bolt stitch obviously you can't finish the edges off the same as an overlocker so with most jerseys it doesn't fray anyway most of the time so that's absolutely fine so no you don't necessarily need one the next question is from Anne and she was asking how do I plan and track my projects and makes over the year? So I do tend to use Ravelry to record um, information about my knitting projects but I also have lists in a journal. So I've got um, a notepad that I keep to have all my lists, my to-do lists in. I do like to have a bit of a bash at sort of journaling so I've I tend to sort of draw flowers at the front and then I've got my lists my make nine list so this is my knitting make nine I did have like a scrappy version of this list before I started and I've actually already ticked off two things off my knitting make nine list so I have a, a knitting make nine list then a stitching plans make nine list and then my dressmaking now with the dressmaking I've added things and taken things away quite a lot so it looks a little bit of a mess but I do like to sort of organize um, what I want to do in my journal and then I have a list uh, to do list of every week um, and then I sort of tick things off as I go so last week for instance I'd sort of written a list of things to do at the weekend as well in terms of projects of my own so last year I made like a table where I was labelling each month with a list of goals for each month for each crafty project but I did end up moving things around quite a lot so I didn't do that this year I've just kept it as a normal list. I like to watch Shada Campbell on her YouTube channel. She's got some really lovely bullet journaling ideas. I don't take it to the level as a lot of people do, but I just like to have a little bit of a mess around um, with a bit of stationery. <laughs> so there we go. The third question I've got is from Sue. So Sue asked for me to show you this seahorse, is, which has been in the background of the podcast. So this is a gorgeous little seahorse that my friend Mary made from my local quilt group. And we'd have a little sales table sometimes. And a couple of years ago, I purchased this from the sales table. And it has got lavender inside it and it smelled absolutely gorgeous. It doesn't smell very much anymore, but it's still really pretty. And I like to keep it in my craft room just because it looks gorgeous. It is a tilde pattern for a seahorse, but I can't tell you what exactly the book was that it was out of because I obviously didn't make it, but it's definitely a tilde one and I think it's in one of those um, sea themed books, but I'm not 100% sure. If you do have this book, could you put in the description bar which one it was so I can let people know if they're after the pattern. There's little fins either side as well, which I think is rather lovely. And there's a little thing to hang it up on, but I haven't actually been hanging it up anywhere. I just sort of wedge it in the yarn there behind me. <laughs> so there we go. So I've just got my shop update now. I just wanted to let you know that the yarn clubs, including the Music from the Movies Sock Set Club, and also the Mixtape Minis Yarn Club, will be available to pre-order until the 28th of this month. So that's Sunday. So if you want one, please make sure you order before Sunday. And then all the yarn clubs will be dispatched on Friday the 5th of March. 
So thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you'd like to see more. And I shall see you in the next episode. Bye!